introduce our guest today. You guys, not only is he an incredible heavyweight boxer, but also a huge anti-bullying advocate. David Nino Rodriguez is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we've got Brett and we've got Grace. So, David, I've been so excited to have you here on the show. Um, first of all, a lot what I know of you as a heavyweight champion, uh, six belts. And yep. your your record, 36 and... 36 and 2, uh, 34 knockouts, but... Uh, you know, 34 knockouts? 34 knockouts, but I contribute the two losses to after the incident that, okay. that happened to me. Which um, we'll talk about. Yeah. We're going to talk about okay. the incident. So before the incident, you were 34 and I was 0, on the, I all was, knockouts. I was 36 and 0, 34 30, knockouts, yeah. That's insane. And, you know, five in the world, and it was, you know, it was really just... I was riding that, that high horse, and everything was just unbelievable. And Fifth then, in uh, the world, yeah, yeah. and a lot of people had you pinned as the next heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, they were calling me the Klitschko killer. Yeah. They were, I mean, I was right in line to do some big, big things, and, you know, due to some unfortunate circumstances, things happen, and, you know, I almost, I was almost murdered, you Let's know? talk about the incident okay. then, because a lot of people... Get that out of the way. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk about, I mean, like, this what? Is, but this is the, and, and, and again, like I talked to you about earlier, not to sound insensitive, but it this incident became like the silver lining of you becoming this big activist. So it was really a blessing. Happened? Yeah, it was a blessing in disguise because what happened was, you know, I took the, the most positive I could out of it. What happened was I was, um, I was, I was cutting the throat. And, and Where were you? Walk in Phoenix, it. walking out of a bar. I was, I was intoxicated. So were some of my friends and there was some confrontation. I don't really remember the whole thing. I'll be honest with you. I remember that I, we started throwing words back at each other. And as I was leaving, they came behind me and slit my throat open. And then they also stabbed my friend. So both of us are laying there. I'm gasping for her dying. I'm losing so much blood. And um, I lost close to two pints. Oh and um, and uh, I was in a coma for like two days. And when I woke up, I had 369 stitches. And uh, I was lucky because a cosmetic surgeon was on call that night that did this. Otherwise, it probably looked much worse. But uh, so that happened. And it really put a, a huge roadblock in my career. I, I tried to come back too fast. I fought Darnell Wilson on NBC and I got lost. I was winning Your the fight. Your first loss. I was winning the fight and I got knocked out the last 10 seconds. Oh, wow. Everything was just a mess for me, you know, and that's what really, really catapulted me into this program. Uh, my friend Sal Montalongo, when I was in El Paso, he saw me. I was real depressed. I was in a real dark, dark time. Like, I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't believe all this happened to me. Right. I mean, so quick. It just happened so quick. I was on, like I said, I was way up here, cloud nine, and then right. all of a sudden came crashing down. It was all over for me. <sighs> And then when that happened, um, this guy named Sal kept coming up to me and saying, hey, man, I want you to help me out with this, the kids, these kids, these kids. Kept talking about kids. I'm like, dude, I'm in no position to talk to any kids. Nobody wants to hear from me. I was so down and out, seriously. Yeah. Well, it turned out that I started, um, started he, he bugged me. Yeah. He, he was bugging me every day. I was like, what is with this dude? He was and, a thorn in your side. Yeah, I was like, what the is kids, with this the guy? Kids. He's all, come on, man, just come talk to the kids. It'll make you feel better. I'm like, I don't want to feel better. I was just that bad. And he goes, he goes, he goes, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, you know, how about bullying? Because I was bullied as a kid. You were bullied yeah. as a kid. Yeah. Wow. And so we went and we started, we put together a little presentation. It took about, I can't believe how quick, it, it formed organically. Right. And it really took off. And the next thing you know, here I am talking to kids in detention homes, alternative schools, middle schools. Uh, one, one time it was like 2,500 kids. And I'm talking to them and I'm thinking to myself, but man, this is all happening really fast. And then now here I am, this advocate for an anti-bullying. And I, all I'm doing is sharing my stories. What is your story? And I know that you work closely with lucidlove.org. Mm -hmm. And you're a keynote speaker now. And a yeah. lot of kids are looking up to you and relating to you. It's taken off like story? wildfire. Um, well, what I do is I don't try to, to lecture the kids or tell them anything. You know, what I do is I go, I, I go and, I, and I make my presence known. I say, hey, you know, I was a six-time heavyweight champ. And I tell them my stories, my personal stories, my humiliating stories about me being bullied as a kid Give in junior. One. Oh gosh, okay. Um, well, I one of them was I, I would my. It's a presentation about an hour and fifteen minutes, and I talk about how I used to eat my lunch in the stall in the gymnasium because I was so scared I was gonna get my butt kicked every like day the at lunch. Stall? Yeah, and I I oh that I was so traumatized. So I used to have to uh, um, eat my lunch in the stall. And and because I was so petrified, I was scared to go outside because all these kids wanted to kick my butt. I don't know why. I was, they still do, but uh, <laughs> people still want to kick my butt. Yeah. But it's like I talk about how the principal would curse me out, yell at me, tell me I'm never going to mount anything. And then I'll never forget when I won my first championship in El Paso. 
he was front row, and he was like, hey, can I get your autograph? Oh, and yeah. I was like, I was like, wow, how sweet it is. Wow. <laughs> so so you, you have this really uplifting message for people who are being bullied, but yeah. what would you say to the kids who bully? I'm sure there, a lot there, of You know, it's a vicious cycle. What, I, what I'm discovering is that, and I'm learning on the job, but I'm discovering is these kids that bully, something's going wrong at home. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, it's, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, you know, and first you got to remember, dude, kids can be mean. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. just the nature of the way things are. It's a pecking order. And, you know, I, even when I was being bullied, I took it out on other kids too. I was a bully too. That's In what? a lot of ways, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm not saying I was a you know, a saint, and I was not a saint. That's the vicious cycle, though. You're <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oftentimes, yeah. these kids it's are It's insecurity. Being... Yeah. It's insecurity. It comes from a really deep uh, level of insecurity. Right, and they're mirroring what's happening to them at home or on the playground. And yeah. even Mike Tyson, he talked about that, too, that he yeah. was bullied, and oh, then yeah. he became a bully. I mean, Mike Tyson was bullied? I mean, come on. I know. <laughs> I just watched Champs the other night, and he talks about all yeah. of that, and it's insane. So what kind of feedback have you gotten since you've been going out and giving these talks? From the it's, kids that you're talking to. You know, to. I just got a call on my way here right now, and it's like I'm uh, when I get back to El Paso, which is the 27th, I'm going there for a week. I already I'm booked for four schools already. It's just taking off because we're not I'm not we're not going up there and lecturing. We're sympathizing. Mm -hmm. We're really talking to the kids. And and what touched me, man, this is this was the one that that got me the most. There's a kid named James. That I could tell when I was leaving my presentation, he was looking at me like, with these uh, little kid, you know the the. the the program directors were telling me that he's always there at the rec and he never, never likes to go home. Mm -hmm. And then he was probably eight years old. And then after my presentation, I gave it uh, and it ended. He comes running up for me from his seat and just hugs me and just starts crying. <sighs> and he's bawling on my shirt and I didn't know what to do. I was like looking around and um, I really struck a nerve with him. And that was a very rewarding to me. And um, what I'm trying to do right now, we just got a release signed that that whenever I'm in El Paso, I can go down there and take them to baseball games or yeah. oh, take them to the park great. or something like that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to really, really uh, try to help the kid out. You know? And at the end of the day, just him knowing that, that someone else has gone through it and other people go through it. So they right. don't feel so isolated and alone. That exactly. speaks volumes. Please, you guys, check out lucidlove.org. We'll also have that petition up uh, with your blog and Nick Diaz. And your story, just absolutely, you are changing it's not, lives. It's not done yet. No, it's That's not. not. <laughs> no, it's not. We're it's rooting beginning. for you. It is just, just beginning. beginning. We can't wait to have you back on the show Thank as you. heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, we're yeah. standing here first. <laughs> and we'll see you guys all next time on Pop Trigger.